Welcome to Swallowfield Chapel. We're so glad you could join us. My name is Elvis. Our speaker today is Terence Forrester. The title of this week's message is Jesus, the center of it all. Remember to share the link with your family and friends and subscribe to our YouTube channel. May God bless you as we worship together. Morning, everybody. Welcome to Swallow Field. I'm Ariel. This is Tahira. This is Marsha. We invite you guys to just sing along with us and have a great time worshiping the Lord. All right, let's go. Everybody, everybody. So we're really going to write them on. He who abides in me will forever be fruitful indeed. I am the way, the truth, and the light. No one gets to the Father except that He comes through me.
going to a very familiar song for Salfield, so get up and join us in this one. scripture reading is taken from Hebrews 1 verse 1 to 3. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom also he made the universe. The son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. This 
is the word of the Lord. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. It is my wonderful privilege to share with you from the word of God this morning. And I will immediately say, if there's ever a time that you feel spiritually complacent at times like I do, or if there's ever a time you feel as if you need to be physic, um, spiritually challenged like I do from time to time, and if there's ever a time that you feel discouraged like I do from time to time, then the book of Hebrews is an excellent place to be at. This wonderful book was written about 40 years after the glorious resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. The destination is unsure. The name of the writer is uncertain, but the message is abundantly clear and is this, that Jesus is superior. 13 times this word is used throughout this wonderful book. Jesus is superiority over angels, is superiority over Moses and the prophets, is superiority over Haran and the priesthood, and on and on it goes. In Jesus Christ, there is something different. There is something new. Above all, there is something better. Jesus is the center of it all. Ah, oh, there is our title for the sermon. And from time to time in our different reflections, there is a longing, there is a yearning for love, for a more humane society, you know? There is some time, you know, our frustrations with, with evil and with the problem of suffering. And then in these pandemic times, we often wonder about our mortality, you know, and, and a lot of things are happening to us, you know, mentally, sometimes consciously and sometimes unconsciously. And that sometimes put persons in a state of depression. And so the question we will ask ourselves, is there a center? The Christian conviction is that there is a center. And that center, I will submit, is our Lord Jesus Christ. That center is Jesus. And so it is as we look at the text that was read earlier, we are confronted by these words, and the, the writer is making it abundantly clear that Jesus is not only the center of creation, but he's also the center of redemption. And it is amazing, and it is refreshing to know, because this book was written to those Christians in the first century. And they were getting a little discouraged. They were wondering, does it, does it worth the sacrifice? Does this Christian thing really make sense? And I'm sure when we go through our different struggles, these are sometimes questions we ask ourselves, you know? Is it, is it is the sacrifice worth it? And so the writer of the book of Hebrews, instead of giving us a long pastoral discourse, the writer is giving us a word of exaltation. And, 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 and it is there in, in, in chapter 13 of verse 22, when it says, bear with me with my word of exaltation. So the objective here is to encourage us. The objective here is to give us a fresh revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. And what it is basically saying, you know, is that when we get this fresh revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, it will put everything into perspective. But why is it so critical that we get this fresh revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ? The first point I want to submit is that 
in these last days, in these latter times that we are living in, the number one problem that we are faced with is deception. How do I know that? When you examine Jesus' Olivet Discourse, which is outlined in Matthew 25, when Jesus gave that great sermon on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him and they said, Lord, you know, what will be the sign of your coming? And when will it be? And before Jesus went into all that would happen in the latter days prior to his coming, the first thing Jesus said to them was take heed and beware of deception. Let no man deceive you. And two other times it is, it is um, repeated in, in the chapter. And when we see that level of repetition in scriptures, it means that we need to take it seriously. And so it is in these times, deception is all around us. And let me say this, deception is not only out there in the world, it is inside of the church. And that is why it is so dangerous. And that is why it is important what we do with our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is why we need to have this fresh revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. There's a verse in Ephesians 4, verse 14 that says, that we be no longer children, tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, carried out by men who lie in wait to deceive. And my submission is that once we have this fresh revelation, this new revelation of Jesus Christ, we will not be wallowed in deception. And that is why the cults flourish. Because what the cults does with Jesus is to reduce Jesus to a created being. You know, to, to say that he was a God. That he was, he was just an archangel created by God. But the verses here in, in the book of Hebrews is telling us that all things was made through our Lord Jesus Christ. And not only all things were made through him but all things were made by him. And it goes on further to say that all things are being upheld by our Lord Jesus Christ. What is that saying? Jesus is the center of creation. So getting this fresh revelation will not only guard us from deception, but it will help us in every area of our lives. Let me give some examples. Because Jacob, he got a fresh revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He had a broken family. He had a conflict to resolve. Just as though you and I may have a broken family or a conflict to resolve. And so it is, Jacob was there. He was about to meet his brother. And he was very fearful of that meeting. He thought he was going to be walking to his own funeral. Why is he thinking that? Because of all that he did to his brother Esau, he thought Esau was going to kill him. And so he was in a crisis. He was having a problem. And that was when he got that fresh revelation from our Lord. And he was never the same. We know of that story very well. He was at Peniel and that great wrestling match took place for the entire night. Can you imagine if pay-per-view was on then? I mean, it would be a blockbuster. And so it is that morning after he had a fresh revelation from the Lord, he was able to go and meet his brother who he had not seen for over 20 years. And because the Lord was leading him, he was able to resolve the conflict with his brother. And at the end of the meeting, they hugged and they chatted and they had a great time of fellowship. What is the message? The message is that we too may be in a broken family and we too may be required to spearhead, to lead the whole issue of reconciliation, of making that first move of reconciling ourselves with, with, with our family members. And that is important. We may have conflicts that we need to resolve with our brothers and sisters, with our neighbors, with our schoolmates, with whoever. Because I believe when we get this fresh revelation from our Lord Jesus Christ, we'll be so empowered to 
be ministers of reconciliation. We may be having problems with our marriages, you know, where it, is, it, it requires us to have a soft heart, a compassionate heart, a forgiving heart, so that, you know, coming back together can take place. And no more than ever, marriages are under threat. And I believe if we can just get this fresh revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the center of it all, it will help us in our relationships. But not only did Jacob had this fresh revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, Isaiah had it. For over 50 years, he, would, he lived in the shadow of King Uzziah. And when King Uzziah died, he visited the temple and he had a fresh revelation of the Lord Jesus. And when he had that revelation, Isaiah was never the same again. When he opened his mouth, he said, woe is me. And, he, and, and the Lord says, who shall I send? And he readily said, listen, Lord, send me. He was ready for service for the Lord. What is that saying? If we need to be spurred into action, if we need to be spurred into service for the Lord, we need to get this fresh revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the third example I want to use is the Apostle Paul. Because here is a man who used to persecute the church. And he was on the road to Damascus and he got a fresh revelation from the Lord Jesus Christ. And after that, he became a passionate proclaimer and promoter of our Lord Jesus Christ. Which is exactly what we need to do. Because once we get this fresh revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, we need to take this gospel message. We need to take this good news of salvation to our family members to our friends, to our neighbors, wherever God has placed us, we need to be like the Apostle Paul. And that is why getting this fresh revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ is so important. Absolutely important that we get it. And so it is getting this fresh revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, it means that we know and know beyond a shadow of doubt that Jesus is the center of it all. All things were made through him, the writer is telling us. All things was made by him. And I can tell you, you know, when you look at the first three verses of this book, it is comparable to, to, to Genesis chapter 1. Because when we re read Genesis 1, when we open the book of Genesis chapter 1, we are confronted by those 10 magnificent, majestic, encouraging words. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Awesome. That is Jesus in action. And by the time you get to verse 26, the Godhead was in council. When it says, let us make man. Let us make you and I in, the, in his own image and in his own likeness. What is that saying? It is saying that we are unique. We are important. We are valuable to God. Jesus is the center of it all. This vast universe, and this universe is vast. Think about it. The moon is over 230,000 miles away. The sun is over 93 million miles away. Pluto is 4.7 billion miles away. And then think of the North Star. It is over 400 trillion miles away. Yet everything is relatively close. It is telling us that this universe is not only, was not only made through our Lord Jesus Christ, it was not only made by our Lord Jesus Christ, but he's the one who is upholding everything through the power of his awesome might. That is why I love the words out of Psalm 19 that says, the heavens declares the glory of God and the firmament thereof. Day after day, it uttereth speech. Night after night, it showeth knowledge. What is that saying? It is saying this, it's like the sun and the moon and the stars are celestial evangelists evangelist that goes around the world 24-7 saying Jesus Christ is the center of it all. But not only is it 
telling us that Jesus is the center of creation, but it is also telling us beyond a shadow of doubt that Jesus is the center of redemption. How do we know that? 2,000 years ago, something spectacular, something decisive happened in Palestine. With the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, the universe and us will never, ever be the same anymore. Because Jesus, he went to Calvary, Calvary and he went on a cruel cross, and there he suffered and he died, according to scriptures. And then he was buried, according to scriptures. And then, and then, on the third day, he rose triumphantly from the dead. And that is why I just love the verse out of John 14, verse 19, that says, because he lives, let me repeat it, because he lives, we shall also live. I just love the words of the songwriter when he says, oh, the love that drew salvation plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span at Calvary. And then it went on to say that mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. That is redemption. Jesus is the center of our redemption. Think of Job. Job had his trials. He had his struggles. You know, he suffers adversities, just as how some of us may, will suffer adversities, yet he was able to open his mouth and boldly declare, for I know that my Redeemer lives, and I will stand with him again on that day. Jesus Christ is not only the center of creation, but he's also the center of redemption. And when we get this right, it will put everything I submit into perspective. He is our Redeemer. And it, and it is tremendous. It is tremendous. So, to the application, because, you know, when we get who Jesus is, when we recognize that Jesus is the center of, of it all, it requires us to do three things. And there are three appeals I want to make in conclusion. The first appeal is an appeal for patience. Because at times, you know, we are in a rush. We live in a world that is instant. You know, you need a cup of coffee, it's instant coffee. We need some information, it's Google, and it's gone. We want to watch a video, bam, is YouTube, you know. We live in a world where we want things instantly. But let us be patient because Jesus Christ, who is the center of it all, he has a plan. And his sovereign purposes will not only be accomplished in this life, but in the life to come. He is at work, sometimes knowingly, sometimes unknowingly, but he never stops working for us. And as a result, let us be patient and let his will be done, not only on earth, but also in heaven. So their first appeal is for us to exercise patience because, you know, the Lord's timing is perfect. You may be not well physically and you have been praying for years and nothing is happening, happening. But the Lord is saying, be patient, my son. Be patient, my daughter. Not only am I in charge, but I am in control. And nothing will happen to you without my knowledge. Let us, let us reflect on that verse in Romans chapter 8 when the Lord says, listen, what shall separate you from my love? Huh? What is it? Is it height or death or, you know, and then he lists a number of things and then the qualifier was added on, nor anything in the creative order. And we know he's the creator. So what is that saying? Nothing. Absolutely nothing can separate us from his love. So let us be patient because what? He is in charge and he's in control of each and every one of us. Philippians 1 verse 6 says, 
He who, this is our creator, who is the center of it all. He who has started a work in us, he is going to bring it to completion. So the first appeal is an appeal for us to be patient. And then the second appeal in the application is an appeal for humility. Because sometimes, you know, we get a little knowledge. Sometimes, you know, we find ourselves in a fortunate position and we believe that we can take care of things. But I believe when we recognize that Jesus is the center of it all, we need to humble ourselves and let the Lord do his work. A plea for humility. You know, Jesus himself, when he was here on earth, the Bible tells us that he humbled himself. And he became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God has highly exalted him and has given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And amazingly, you know, when we, nothing is wrong with the exaltation, you know, but it's how we get there. And so it is if we humble ourselves, it is the Lord who will exalt us in due course. And that is why humility is so important. And every day I get up, I say, Lord, help me to walk humble before you. Because I believe that is what it is required of us in the application of this great passage in the book of Hebrews. And the third appeal is, is an appeal for trust. It's an appeal to trust. Because our Lord Jesus, we can always trust him. We can always depend on him. You know, and, and, and why is it so important? Because there, there may be a tendency for us to have this dependency and trust in world leaders. There are some persons when they talk about certain world leaders, it's like, it, it, it's almost cultic, you know? So our allegiance, our trust should not be on Trump or Biden or Merkel or Macron, you know, or any other world leaders. Our dependency and trust must be, it has to be on our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the center of it all. I love how this preacher put it, you know. He said there should be no sermon preached without great and mighty proclamation about our Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes you hear some sermons and it is bereft of our Lord Jesus Christ. You hear nothing about the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is why in the book of Revelation, it tells us that Jesus is on the outside of the church knocking. The verse says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He wants to get into the church. He wants to get into our lives. Why? Because he is the center of it all. We can all trust him. We can always trust him. The Bible tells us that he has gone to prepare a place for us. And because he has gone to prepare a place, he's going to come again and restore us unto himself. He's going to make everything new. Because in Jesus Christ, who is the center, there's something new. There's something different. Above all, there's something better. We can trust him. We can trust him with our lives. The Bible says, you know, the psalmist says, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Why? Because Jesus is the one who is going to walk us into heaven. You remember when Stephen was being stoned to death? The Bible tells us Jesus was there standing at the right hand of the Father, ready to receive him. He's going to take the very best care of us. Where is Jesus now? He's at the right hand of the Father. And he has a new glorified body. And we too can trust him that we're going to get a new glorified body. You know, we go to the gym, we walk, we run because we want to take care of this body. But this body is so frail, it's going to go. You know, I was saying to a friend a couple of days ago, you know, he was telling me that he was having back problems. And I said to him that, we have reached the age when our back goes out more than we do. But we can rest assured that we're going to get a new glorified body. A body that is going to defy anti-magnetic force and anti-gravitational force. We're going to have this new body. Yeah. So we can trust him. We can always trust him. And that's why I love the words of Charles Spurgeon. 
when we are not able to trace his hands, we can trust his heart. Let us keep our focus on Jesus. Let us keep our eyes on Jesus, who is not only the author and finisher of our faith, but the one who is the center of creation and the one who is also the center of redemption. I close with the words of the songwriter when he says, Keep your eyes on Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of this world will go strangely dim in light of his glory and his grace. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that you are a loving Father to all of us. And you sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, into this world. You have allowed him to be creator of everything. You have allowed him to be the center of redemption. And oh, we thank you. And so, Lord Jesus, help us, Lord, to recognize that you are the center of it all. It's all about you, Lord Jesus. And we know, Lord, a day will come. And we think that day is very soon when you will burst those clouds and return with power and with great glory. The scripture tells us that you will touch down on the Mount of Olives and you will cross the Kijan Valley and enter through the Eastern gates of Jerusalem. And you're going to make the, your way up to Mount Moriah, the Temple Mount. And on that Mount, in that temple, you're going to establish the throne of your father, David, and you're going to rule and reign forever and forever and forever. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're the center of it all. We bless you, Lord, and we give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Good morning, brothers and sisters. What a joy it is to share in communion today. I've taken off my mask and I want you to know that my brother with me is fully vaccinated and I have had the first shot of my AstraZeneca. So at my age, I'm about 50-60% there, depending on what research you believe. Bless the Lord. We've been hearing today about Jesus being the center of it. And this is what communion, communion is about. It's about Jesus. You know, in the Gospels, the first three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, have a very terse reminder of what took place on that institution of the Lord's Supper, where Jesus, after he washed the disciples' feet, which we picked, up, picked that up, of course, in um, one of the Synoptic Gospels, took bread, blessed it, broke it, and said, take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. And then after that, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he shared it with them, and they were all able to drink. And he said, this is for the remission of sins. Jesus Christ was the one whose sacrifice gives us freedom, gives us relationship, and gives us forgiveness. That is what we celebrate today. When we look, for instance, at the fourth gospel, fourth and final gospel in John, there's a much more extended account of what happened before and after the institution of the Lord's Supper. And one of the things that we want to emphasize is this, that wherever you think of salvation, you are reminded that it came through the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the one who was at the center. And especially at this time of Pentecost, remember that when he left, which we read in John 17, he said, I'm leaving them. Father, I pray that they will not be alone. Because he knew that as he promised them, the Holy Spirit would come. That's the promise of the Holy Spirit in the earlier chapters of John. So today we celebrate not just the fact that Jesus Christ died, was buried, that he rose again, and that he's coming again, but also celebrate that in that time between, in the meanwhile, we have the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to invite us today to share together. I hope you have your bread and your wine or your grape juice or your wafers, whatever it is that you have been moved to have this morning. And I'm going to ask our brother who shared with us so ably earlier, Terence, my fellow elder, to just pray a blessing over the emblems today. Terence. Thank you, Brother Lance. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, the one who is the center of it all, it is you we glorify. It is you we praise because you are worthy of all our praise and you're also worthy of all our worship. As the songwriter declares, all our hallelujahs belongs to you. You are the one who make this possible. And before you left planet Earth, you said as often as we do this, we do so in remembrance of you. So by, by us participating in this wonderful ceremony, we are acting in obedience. And we know that communion is about your glorious return, which is certain. Mm. And so Lord, we thank you for the bread. We thank you, Lord, that it is, it is symbolic of your body that was broken and battered and bruised for us, Lord. Lord, you bore that cross, and that is something tremendous. It speaks to sacrifice. It speaks to how much you love us, and we thank you for that great love, dear Father. And so, Lord, as we are about to partake of this bread, symbolic of your body, we give you thanks for it, Lord. And Lord, the cup. Scripture tells us that without the shedding of blood, there would be no remission for our sins. There would have been no possibility of us getting forgiveness for our sins. And your blood, Lord, we know, Lord, that it reaches the uttermost to the guttermost. There's something democratic about your blood, Lord Jesus. Lord, we just thank you for it, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you made the ultimate sacrifice, O oh God. You died 
a cruel death on that cruel cross and shed your blood so that, Lord, we could be redeemed, so that, Lord, we could in inherit eternal life through you. And we thank you for this, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Cleanse us, Lord, from all sins, from all unrighteousness, from all in iniquities, O God. And as we partake of these emblems, O God, Help us to do so, Lord, with the knowledge that we are acting in obedience to your words. So we bless you, Lord, and we give you praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 In the night the Lord Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had blessed it, he broke it. And it gave to his disciples, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Let us partake together as we share in the relationship we have with Jesus Christ. The way, the truth, and the life, the center of it all, shall we eat. And in the same manner, also, he took the cup. And he said to them, This is a cup that was representative of my blood, which was shed for you for the remission of sin. Drink ye all of it. Shall we drink together? Father, we thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who showed us who you are in the flesh, who came to earth, lived a life of example, but more importantly, died a death of sacrifice that we might have salvation. We ask that we will drink and eat worthily, that we will give you the honor and the glory and the praise as we are empowered by the Holy Spirit, we ask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And amen. Amen. Shall we join together in prayer? Father in heaven, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we stand in the gap. We think, first of all, of your people, the body of Christ who we just celebrated in taking these emblems of bread and wine. We ask that today your Holy Spirit empowerment will be with us. Lord, we pray for everyone who today is depressed. We ask for your encouragement. Lord, we pray for those who are struggling with habits that are tying them down. We pray for deliverance. Lord, we pray for those who are in need. We pray for provision. We ask that those who long for the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray that today will experience a magnificent outpouring in their spirit and that they will be strengthened and empowered to do your bidding. Lord, we pray not just for your church, but we pray, Lord, for our community. We ask that they problems that we are experiencing in terms of criminality and violence, both in the household domestically and in our communities to each other. We pray that this scourge will be stopped by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, that the heart of darkness that fills so many people will be ripped out and a heart, a new heart given to them, a heart of Joy, and this can only come through the saving power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bring salvation, we pray. Bring salvation, bring healing, bring restoration to our community. Let us continue to pray for persons who are in far off lands, Brother Terence, and the mission field. 
Father, we thank you for this wonderful privilege we have in serving you, of being in your service, Lord, because you're the one who has instructed us to go into all the world and proclaim you and you alone, Lord Jesus Christ, because not only are you the center of creation, but you are the center of redemption, Lord. And we thank you for your great and wonderful salvation that you have made available to all the people of this world. And Lord, we pray, Lord, that today will be a day when there will be a mighty transfer from the kingdom of darkness mm. into your glorious kingdom of light. Yes, Lord. Lord Jesus, we are so thankful that mm. you're still in the business of seeking, mm. that you're still in the business of saving, oh God. And right now, Lord, we would like to present to you, Lord, as we pray in agreement, as we pray in unity for the, our unsaved family members, oh God. You know all the names of our unsaved family members, Lord. And Lord, we pray that today will be a day, Lord, when their eyes will be open and they will embrace your great and wonderful salvation. And not only are we praying for our unsaved family members, mm -hmm. but our unsaved friends, our unsaved people of Jamaica, the Caribbean, mm -hmm. and the entire world. Stop. Lord, we pray for them, mm -hmm. Lord, in a special way that through your Holy Spirit, you will draw men, women, boys, and girls unto you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Because Stop. we know from scriptures that it is not your desire, it is not your will that any should perish, but that all should come into eternal life yes, through so. you, Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. Lord, we want to pray for your many missionaries that are scattered across this world, oh God. Lord, we continue to pray for courage for them, Lord. Lord, we continue to pray for boldness for them, Lord, that they will continue to boldly declare your good and great salvation, dear Lord. Mm. We pray for the different missionary agencies, Lord, Youth with a Mission, Operation Mobilization, mm -hmm. Lord Wycliffe, you know these organizations, Lord, and institutions. We pray about their, their funding, Lord, that, Lord, the necessary funds will be there for them to keep sending out persons, Lord, mm -hmm. in the byways and the highways, Lord, to boldly proclaim your gospel, O oh, Lord. Father, help us as a people, Lord to have a burden for lost souls, Lord. Help us, Lord, not to look to the natural, but look to the supernatural, O oh God. Because not only are you the God of the natural, but you are the God of the supernatural. So, Lord, we just pray, Lord, that we as your people, Lord, will seek, Lord, not our will, but your will, O oh God, as we go about our daily lives. Help us, Lord, to be ever focus on the mission, on the task at hand, knowing that we need to redeem the times because the days are evil. Sure. So Lord, we bless you and we give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen and amen. The Lord is my shepherd. He goes before me, defender behind me, defender behind me, I won't fear, I won't fear, I'm filled with anointing, I'm filled with anointing, my cup's overflowing, Cups overflowing. No weapon can harm me. No weapon can harm me. I won't fear. I won't fear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am not 
us raise our hands for the blessing and now may the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you and may the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you may the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and grant you his peace mm. and above all his joy both now and forever 
Amen. 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 Lord, go with you. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. To receive personal confidential prayer, call, email, or text, WhatsApp, or call us today up to 11.30 a.m. at 876-521-9437 or 876-877-9794 and 876-371-0898 for men only. Or you can email your request to prayer at swallowfieldchapel.org or by text at 876-395-7694. All are welcome to come and worship with us in person each Sunday starting today, June 27, at 9 a.m. at number 9. Registration is not required. All COVID-19 protocols are observed. Remember, you may also watch our online service starting at 9 a.m. on Sundays via our YouTube channel. Thank you for giving in these troubled times. We invite you to continue to give as the Lord enables you to support our ministries and those in special need. Here are a few convenient ways to do so. You may deposit your tithes and offerings in the drop box at the church office at number 7, Mondays to Fridays from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Tithes and offerings can also be done by direct online deposit to our Swallowfield Chapel BNS New Kingston current account number 804161, branch number 50575. Or you can log on to swallowfieldchapel.org, click Give to make your direct online contribution. Financial contributions for food care packages should be so indicated. Visiting with us for the first time? Welcome! We invite you to complete the contact card in the link below to connect with us. God bless you. Parents, the Children's Ministry PTA invites you to a Zoom meeting today, Sunday, June 27, 2021 at 3 p.m. Check the description below for the link to join. Don't miss it. Children, children, don't miss Zoom Sunday school classes starting at 8 a.m. and children baptism classes every Sunday at 10 a.m. Please see the link in the description below. We are seeking disciples who want to make disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ and are willing to serve as small group leaders for Connect Group or ACE Ministry. If you are interested in serving, support and training will be provided. Please email discipleship at swallowfieldchapel.org. Meetup, our Young Adult Fellowship is on Mondays at 8.30 p.m. and Wednesdays at 7.15 p.m. Follow us on Instagram at Let's Meet Up JA. Men! Mellow meets every first Friday of each month, so don't miss it this Friday, July 2 at 7.30 p.m. Check the link in the description below. And remember, all are welcome to join us every weekday morning and on Saturdays for our online prayer meeting from 6.30 a.m. to 7.30 a.m. Click and share the link in the description below. Help us fund our Youth Reaching Youth YRY program by ordering your pan of fish Monday to Friday, WhatsApp or call 876-427-1349 or the church office. Fellow Jamaicans, there are children in our nation in need of a safe and loving Christian home. Family Life Ministries, in collaboration with the Child Protection and Family Services Agency, will train and support you as a foster family. This is one way of playing your part in advancing the welfare of the whole human race. To find out more about the For the Child Foster Care Program, call 876-816-0889 today. This message is brought to you by Family Life Ministries, in partnership with the Child Protection and Family Services Agency and Nairn Family Homes Canada. Remember to share the link to our services with family and friends at home and abroad and subscribe to our YouTube channel. For the links to these and other activities, visit our website, swallowfieldchapel.org forward slash announcements. Here's a reminder to stay safe, wear your mask, wash hands regularly, sanitize and maintain physical distance. May God bless you and keep you always.